We recently learned a number of strategies to design products which will remain in use for longer. But what effect would this have on the business activities of most companies, which actually operate by selling new products? With this in mind, what are the ideas behind the service economy or the sharing economy? These strategic business drivers and barriers, which directly affect the design and engineering of products, will be the topic of this video. Throughout most of human history, the extraction, processing, transportation, and manufacturing of raw materials to produce finished products was a slow and labor-intensive process. As a result, products were comparatively much more expensive than they are today, and the number of items in the average household was far fewer. Products were naturally kept in use for longer, and reuse and self-repair were common activities. Since the Industrial Revolution, the manufacturing and distribution of products has accelerated exponentially, making these products increasingly cheap. A combination of falling resources and manufacturing costs, combined with rising labor costs, have led to the situation in which even simple repairs are often more expensive than simply buying a new product. To make matters worse, increasing global competition between manufacturing companies has led to a price-based and innovation-based market. Products are no longer being valued for their quality and durability, but for a combination of low price and innovative features. While companies race to meet ever more demanding sales volumes, customers look for ever cheaper alternatives to replace products which have been used for an increasingly shorter time, either because the product failed, as could be expected since it was made cheaply, or simply because the product has dropped out of fashion. Apart from niche markets for high quality, high durability products, a major part of the world's products have been designed with a mentality of make, use more and more briefly, and then discard. This is what we refer to as the problem behind the linear economy. So how do we align the needs of individuals, companies, and countries to generate value and income with the growing environmental pressure caused by an ever faster consumption of resources? How do we provide incentives to companies to make products which can be reused longer, basically eliminating the need for customers to replace their products in the near future? The service and the sharing economy are two models to potentially deal with these questions. While the two models can work in parallel, we frequently also find them to be in open tension. The service economy, as in the case of the OB bicycle, which we have already covered, relies on a company, in this case OB Fits, which owns a large fleet of bicycles. These bicycles are rented out for short periods of time to a large number of different users. While a traditional bicycle company was only concerned with manufacturing and then selling bicycles, a service-based bicycle company will also manage, maintain, repair, and eventually remanufacture or recycle their bicycles. Customers pay for access to the bikes and don't want to be troubled by flat tires or faulty brake. As you can imagine, the design strategies used to design these bikes is very different to those which would be used for a traditional bike. Since the company is responsible for the bicycle over its entire service life, they are more likely to design their bikes to be as durable as possible, with more resistant materials, fewer parts which could break or fail, and easier access for cleaning and maintenance. Even if the bike is a bit more expensive, and it would therefore be less competitive if customers were thinking of buying it, this extra cost will be worth it in the long run, as it will save the company a lot of time and resources repairing their hundreds or even thousands of bikes. The sharing economy, on the other hand, is based on the shared use of a single product between different users, often without a company managing the product or making it accessible to one user or the other. You might have heard of certain online car sharing services, where people can rent out their own cars to other drivers, or tour sharing sites, where users can exchange gardening or construction tools over a short period of time. 
Sometimes these exchanges are free, as both users eventually get the tools they need and lend out the ones that they don't. And sometimes they come with a fee. Frequently, they are managed by a central party, such as a website, which facilitates the transaction between users and therefore charges a service fee. But do products need to be designed differently to fit into a sharing economy? And do manufacturing and companies actually benefit from this economic model? While the service economy is centered around the activities of companies and it can largely improve their economic and environmental sustainability, the sharing economy often happens outside of the influence of companies or even to the benefit of companies other than the original manufacturer. Think again of car sharing. Car sharing can reduce costs for users, reduce the number of cars that need to be produced and run, and even generate profit for car owners and for the car sharing platform. At the same time, what benefit does it bring to the car manufacturing companies themselves? Why should these companies design and produce cars at great cost to themselves, which will last longer in a sharing economy, if this will only bring long-term benefits to other parties while reducing the number of cars they can sell. These economic models and the drivers and barriers must be taken into account when designing the business model for a product. Whether we are trying to extend the service life of our products or trying to make sure that when their service life ends, they can be replaced, remanufactured uh, or recycled more easily, we must consider who will perform such activities and what incentives, if any, they will have to do so.